had just finished a seven night cruise with my family on board the MSC Seaside, and I'm going to tell you exactly why it is the best cruise I've been on so far, while still having plenty of ways it could be better next time we cruise with MSC on the Seaside. One of the most important factors of cruising, especially when cruising with lots of family or guests, is the cost. This is one of the things that MSC does better than almost anyone. One of my pastimes in the evening is scrolling through cruise websites, looking for the cheapest cruise I can find. And truthfully, Carnival has some of the cheapest sticker prices I've found. But time and time again, MSC winds up being cheaper per person per night. That's because on all MSC cruises, kids sail free as third and fourth passengers in a cabin. And with a family of seven, four of whom are my kids, that saves a lot of money. In fact, I had never heard of MSC as a cruise line until a couple of years ago when my son was born because they have no minimum sailing age. That's right, most cruise lines require babies to be six months old, but on MSC ships, they understand that everyone, including infants and their new mothers, need a nice relaxing vacation. So this seven night cruise was perfect for us and our four kids, the youngest being our two month old daughter who was the youngest passenger on board by a couple of weeks. We drove all the way to Miami from Chicago. It was a long drive, but it was nice to escape the negative 22 degree Fahrenheit temperatures that we had the morning we left in Chicago for Miami. Sailing out of Miami is great. It's got a beautiful port normally, but the seaside disembarked around sunset and made for some really spectacular views of the skyline and other ships in the port. Our rooms were nothing fancy, just two interior cabins. When we booked, we had cabins that were right next to each other, but MSC reserves the right to move or upgrade your cabin to suit their needs. This happened to us this time, so it was a little disappointing that grandma and our two oldest kids were staying on deck 14, while my wife and two youngest kids were staying directly above them on deck 15. But it was fast enough to take the stairs or just call the other room whenever we needed something. MSC provides different experience levels on their ships. Even the most basic Bella experience is wonderful, but because of a special promotion when we were booking, it was actually cheaper to book the nicer Fantastica experience. It includes things like 12 free drinks per guest, including non-alcoholic drinks and free room service, if those are things that you like on your vacation. So it was nice to have those available, even at a lower cost. The ship itself is beautiful. The MSC Seaside has a unique, modern look that captivates guests. Everything seems cutting edge and new. The ship was just over a year old when we were sailing. We even found some protective tape on some of the metal in our cabins that hadn't yet been removed. Ooh, <laughs> shiny. Even with over 5,000 people on board, the ship didn't feel crowded because of the spacious design choices on the decks and in the lounges. I will say that on sea days, it was difficult to find a chair by the pool, but with a group of seven, we can be a tall order to fill. The main pool area was fun, called the Miami Beach Pool. There was almost always a lot of people and organized activities going on around here. Another popular spot was the South Beach Pool at the back of the ship. This was a popular area more for adults, as its bar was open late, and at the back of the ship, smoking was allowed. But we spent most of our time around the jungle pool area, as it tended to be less crowded, could be made into an indoor pool if it was cold or raining, and it also had the added perk of being right next to the Kids Forest Adventure Water Park. The Forest Adventure Water Park was awesome. If there weren't any activities that were going on, we were hanging out here. My oldest daughter, my wife, mother-in-law, and I all really loved the bigger water slides. The most popular one was the inner tube water slide. It used to be for something called slide boarding, but the inner tubes go faster and allow for doubles to ride. My daughter loved going down this one with dad, mom, and even grandma. There are really cool lights that make the slide interesting until the end when it gets dark, and there's a really great drop right at the end. It's no wonder this slide was so popular. On sea days, there would be a line, but it was never too long a wait. If you ever wanted to avoid the line, just hit up one of the other slides. There was a pair of racing slides that really got you going fast. The slide on the right was definitely a little bit faster. It was a lot of fun to see just how fast you could get going. There was also a big open slide with some fun turns that would really throw you around. I once got going too fast and it actually rolled me over at the bottom. And for anyone too little or just needing a break from the more extreme slides, there was the splash pad. Grabbing a water blaster or a spray cannon was great fun, as well as being splashed by everything around. There was even a giant bucket that would fill up and ring a bell when it was about to drop. I always ran away from it, but so many of the kids would run right in to get splashed in the downpour. Above all the water, safe from any splashing and water cannons, was the ropes course. It was simple enough to be fun even for younger kids, but high enough to be quite a thrill for all the adults. 
you even got some great views from being way up high. All this seems like it's great for kids, and it is. On top of letting kids 12 and under sail free and with reduced daily gratuities, MSC has a great kids program called Do Re Mi. It's really engaging for all the kids that we saw on board. My two daughters were in the mini club for ages three to six years old. Their check-in system was so easy and quick, and the one time they did need to reach us, they were able to get hold of us very quickly. The kids' staff were really passionate about the kids and families. We even had a staff person named Maria who actually remembered us from another cruise on the MSC Divina that we took over two years ago. That really impressed us. But so did the amount of energy that all of the staff put into making sure that the kids had a great time. They even prepared a short talent show for the parents. They offered other activities like dance classes and cooking classes with the chef, but also had plenty of free time where they could use their imagination with games, toys, and lots of Legos. Something I'd like to see a little different in the kids area would be the volume of the music. It was so loud. I know they're trying to create energy in the room, but that can be achieved at around 88 decibels. Now I didn't have my decibel meter with me, but they were easily approaching 100 decibels. Too loud for many ears, especially young kids. But the kids weren't the only ones having fun. MSC Activities staff are really fantastic about getting you involved in their games and activities. Other cruise lines seem to merely provide an opportunity for everyone to get involved in trivia games and dance classes, but the crew on the seaside really passionately drew you into each activity to make sure that they provided you the very best experience possible. And as a side note, the prizes on the MSC Seaside are the best I've ever seen. I've been on other cruises that will give you the same keychain for every activity you win, but on the seaside, each game has a different and really fun prize, including MSC hats, visors, t-shirts, travel bags, pens, backpacks, free drinks, bottles of champagne, and more. If you play to win, then MSC really does a great job of rewarding your efforts. But there were plenty of times when even the losing team would get a smaller prize to thank you for trying your best. Plenty of people just enjoy watching the activities, but when it came to ports, most people got off the boat. This is a great time to really enjoy the ship all to yourself, or get off and explore with the locals. We had a great time on a cable car in St. Thomas that had some really incredible views of the islands and the ships in the port. We also got to check out a beach on the Dutch side of St. Martin, which was just beautiful. But because we've been to Nassau, Bahamas so many times, we decided to enjoy the ship all to ourselves, with very few other guests around. Ports are great, but everyone needs to eat, and the MSC Seaside never disappointed us. There are two buffets, the smaller Biscuity Buffet on Deck 16, and the main Marketplace Buffet on Deck 8. Sometimes, the hours of the buffet on Deck 16 were shorter than we would have liked, but the other buffet was open 20 hours a day. The variety and selections were huge, and they changed from day to day. It was always fun to walk around the entire buffet and sample the different dishes that they had set out at the different stations. But they did consistently offer hamburgers, hot dogs, and some of the best pizza you'll ever have at sea, which should be expected on this Italian cruise line. We loved grabbing a late night slice just before bed. There are also two main dining restaurants. We got to eat in both the Seashore restaurant on deck five and the Ipanema restaurant on deck six. The menus and the chefs are the same. It's just the decor that's different. Dinner was always a highlight of my day because the food was always so good. I literally had the best meal I've ever had in my life, the herbed rack of lamb. It was cooked to perfection, so juicy and tender. Not to mention I had the single best piece of bacon I've ever put in my mouth, and everyone can enjoy desserts. But I'm somewhat of an ice cream connoisseur, so every night I had the specialty ice cream the chef had made that day, including cactus ice cream. I'm serious, I didn't know you could even eat cactus, let alone turn it into ice cream. That ice cream literally changed my life. I'm a different man than I was, a better man, because I had those desserts. We never did eat at any of the specialty restaurants on board, but we did develop a liking for the Venchi Chocolate Bar. Remember those free drink coupons we got when we upgraded to the Fantastica experience? We used the majority of those vouchers here for specialty milkshakes at the chocolate bar. And because they weren't alcoholic, we were even able to use the kids' vouchers here as well. Every day, we looked forward to trying new milkshakes. Our favorites settled on their specialty Oreo Crunch milkshakes and their homemade Mango Gelato milkshakes. Something that MSC could do better in regard to this experience would be provide some more training for the servers and communication to the guests as to which drinks the drink vouchers can and cannot purchase. 
We were surprised when we tried to order milkshakes at different bars, only to be told that the drink vouchers didn't cover milkshakes, even though the coupon itself clearly said that it would. It's just disappointing to think one thing and then be told another as a customer. But those shakes were worth the confusion. And besides, the girls loved getting fancy drinks at the other bars made just for kids, and the bartenders were extra nice, garnishing those fancy drinks with extra cherries because they learned how much my kids liked that cherry on top. The proverbial cherry on top of a cruise for me is live music. The MSC Seaside had some great live music, but it was mostly located in the Haven Lounge or the Seaview Lounge. Most of the other live entertainment just barely met that criteria. Now, as a musician myself, I might be a little biased against this, but most of the live entertainers were just playing a keyboard or a guitar with lots of backing tracks and a singer out front. They had pianos everywhere on board the cruise, but I only actually saw one being played in the Seaview Lounge. It was impressive and I loved going there to hear the piano player or the jazz band that they had. But MSC should hire more live musicians that play the music themselves and put them in and around all these venues. Real live music would sound better instead of just DJs and tracks. I did what I could to fix this and sat down at the piano when I could to entertain myself and the other guests. I love playing the piano and it's always been a dream of mine to play on board a cruise ship. Even without a live band, the evening shows in the theater were incredible. I am amazed at how well MSC is able to captivate the attention of such an international audience as their cruise guests. The singers were the best vocalists I've ever heard at sea, bar none. But they were hardly the best thing on stage. The dancers blew me away, the acrobats amazed everyone with their strength and dexterity, and quick magic acts boggled your mind. The costumes for each show were unique and amazing. My favorite show was their rendition of Peter Pan, called Peter Punk for licensing reasons. But everyone else's favorite was clearly the final show, a tribute to Michael Jackson. The guy playing Michael was outstanding. Every move, every gesture was just like Michael. Truly impressive. On the whole, a cruise on the MSC Seaside is amazing and affordable. The quality of everything MSC does just seems to be a notch higher than other cruise lines, even at a lower price point. The culture on board is very family friendly. I never felt like others were annoyed that my kids were there having a good time. They even have extra diapers for free in the bathrooms. The whole experience left me feeling cultured and valued. I love that they embraced diversity and do everything they can to make sure all guests, not just Americans, have a great experience. At MSC, they never really say goodbye. Instead, they say, Arrivederci, which is Italian for until we meet again. And that really captures my sentiments about MSC and the Seaside. I cannot wait to sail with MSC Cruises again on the Seaside or on board any of their other ships with my whole family.